Alrighty, I have not actually made a video on how to do Lewis diagrams, but I've just recently received a message from Emily asking a question about a Lewis diagram for SO2, sulfur dioxide. So here's a quick video on how to do a Lewis diagram, um, and we'll do it by going through this example. So here's the Lewis diagram for sulfur dioxide. Firstly, we think to ourselves, how many valence electrons do these atoms bring in? So we have a sulfur, we've got an oxygen, it is sulfur dioxide. So we have another oxygen there. Now, how many valence electrons do these guys bring in? Remember, it's only the valence electrons that actually take part in a chemical reaction that actually do anything. So we're looking for the number of valence electrons. Sulfur is number 16 on the periodic table. Its electron arrangement will be 286. So it has six valence electrons to contribute to the party. Oxygen is number 8 on the periodic table. It will have also six valence electrons because its electron arrangement is going to be 26. So it will bring in six valence electrons and the other oxygen being identical will also therefore bring in six valence electrons. So how many electrons do we have to play with? Let's just add those up and we come to 18. So when we put this molecule together, we need to use 18 electrons. Let's go and uh, do that now. Let's make the molecule. So we start with our sulfur in the middle. We always start with the central atom and then oxygens and hydrogens tend to go outside around that. So we have two oxygens. For now, we're just going to throw them one each side of the sulfur. Uh, that won't actually be the final place for our oxygens. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, now. Before I start putting the electrons in, I'm actually just going to draw bonds. We're talking sulfur dioxide. Obviously, the sulfur is actually bonded to the oxygens. What we could do is instead of a line, we could draw two electrons or two dots representing electrons. Uh, because remember, a bond is two electrons. It's a bonding pair of electrons. But in the end, when we're finishing up our Lewis diagram, we're just going to replace any bonding electrons with a line, so we may as well just go straight ahead and do that. So we'll go straight to the line. Then of course we need to complete the octet rule for each atom. Each atom wants to have access to eight valence electrons. Well, the sulfur already has access to four. Two from the bond on the left, two from the bond on the right. It needs four more electrons, so we'll give it the four more electrons. Now you know we put the electrons in pairs because they hang out in pairs. So we'll do the same for the oxygen. We'll complete the octet rule. Remember the bond is two electrons, so each oxygen needs another six electrons around it. So there we go, sulfur dioxide. The sulfur is bonded to the oxygens and the sulfur and each oxygen has access to eight electrons. Is this our final Lewis diagram? <laughs> no, it's not. Because remember, we said we had 18 electrons to play with. How many have we actually played with at the moment? Let's have a look. We have two here, four, six. Remember the bond? That was another two, so that's eight, ten, two, four, six, eight, twenty. Oh, hang on. We've actually used 20 electrons. And that's no good because we don't have 20 electrons, we've only got 18. We need to use two less electrons. Now the way to use two less electrons is to form multiple bonds. Every time you uh, form a multiple bond, so you make a single into a double or a double into a triple, every time you make multiple bonds, you're using two less electrons. And that's exactly what we need to do. We need to use two less electrons. So we can do that by simply making a multiple bond. Let's put a double bond here on the left. Now that oxygen now has access to 10 electrons. Well that's messed up with the octet rule. So we need to get rid of two of them. Bye bye. Uh, same with the sulfur. The sulfur currently has access to uh, 10 electrons. That's not good for the octet rule, so we get rid of two of those as well. Now let's take a look at what we have. The oxygen on the left has access to eight valence electrons. It has 
the four, uh, the two lone pair of electrons plus the four involved in the double bond. Remember each bond is two electrons but we have a double bond so that's four electrons. Uh, so that's the octet rule, satisfied, yay. The sulfur, uh, four from the double bond, two from the single bond and another two from the lone pair up above the S so that's eight, octet rule, all good to go. And the oxygen on the right also has access to eight valence electrons, two from the bond and uh, three lone pairs of electrons around the oxygen. So the octet rule is happily satisfied for all atoms. This now works. So we can see that the Lewis diagram for sulfur dioxide is actually a double bond to one oxygen and a single bond to the other oxygen. So is this the uh, completed Lewis diagram? Yes it is, that works, yay. But we actually want to mention two other things. Uh, firstly, let's talk about the shape of the molecule. It will not be a linear molecule as I've drawn it like this. What we're going to have, let's just redraw that oxygen down here somewhere, double bond to the oxygen. Uh, now this is because the lone pair of electrons uh, at the top of the S, there is going to be electron-electron repulsion between those electrons and the electrons of the uh, bonds, uh, both of the double bond and of the single bond. So that's going to push those bonds uh, around the circle a little bit. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. So it won't be a linear molecule, it will be an angular molecule, a bent molecule. Um, also these other electrons associated with that oxygen, I'm not going to draw them there because again there's electron-electron repulsion between those lone pair electrons and the electrons of the double bond. So we'll just sort of spread them around the oxygen more on a bit of an angle. So this would be a better uh, Lewis diagram for sulfur dioxide. So that's one of the two things I wanted to talk about a bit extra, the shape of the molecule. We can see now that, oh look, it's a bent molecule, grand. Uh, the other thing is, well what's so important about the oxygen on the left? Why does it get the double bond and not the oxygen on the right? What's so funky about the guy on the left? Uh, actually nothing. The double bond could well have been on the right. In fact, let's put it there. Make that a double bond, which means we need to get rid of two electrons from there. And we'll make this a single with another six electrons around it. So it could have been this version right, with a double bond to the oxygen on the right. But then someone could come along and say, hey, what's so special about the oxygen on the right? How come it gets the double bond? Why didn't the guy on the left get it? Well, that was how we started. The oxygen on the left did have it. Now this is called resonance, all right? So what we would actually do is show all possible forms. This is one form of the Lewis diagram, and what we had earlier was another form. What we would do is show all possible forms. So let's do that. We have an S double bond to an O, single to another O, put in the uh, remaining electrons to get up to our 18 electrons. That's one version. Or we could have had an S and a single bond. Hey, where'd you go? Come back, there you are. We could have had a single bond to the oxygen on the left and a double bond to the oxygen on the right. We put in our remaining electrons and then we put a double headed arrow between them. Now I've drawn mine uh, top and bottom, you could draw it left and right and just draw the arrows sideways between them, it really doesn't matter. But we show all possible resonance forms of the molecule. Okay, so the double bond could have been on the left or it could have been on the right, we draw both double-headed arrow between them. So there you go, that is your Lewis diagram for sulfur dioxide. Now actually, maybe I'll just show one more thing super quick. Sometimes resonance forms are shown in one diagram. So we had our sulfur and oxygen, another oxygen, come back, silly computer, there we go. Let's have a single bond, a single bond, and sometimes it's sort of, this happens, a dashed line like that. Uh, and that just means that uh, that dashed line represents the double bond that could be to the oxygen on the left or it could be to the oxygen on the right. I myself much prefer showing both forms like this. Um, 
both resonance forms with the arrow between them. So there you go, the Lewis diagram for sulfur dioxide. Well, that's the video done. If you liked it, brilliant, hit the like button, and leave me a comment too. Now you know what to do, go hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.